Ouais. The producers of tonight's show have gathered together a truly international lineup of entertainers. Like Master Blaster from the Thunderdome. As you can see, much of the audience is made up of young people. Which for a royal variety means shit's about to get real weird. Maggie's here again, complete with comically inappropriate soundtrack. Mr. Marmaduke Hussey, the chairman of the BBC, and Lady Susan Hussey. I find that you never know where to look when you're stood next to a princess during the national anthem. After a welcome from Frank Bruno. Thank you. Yu Tree Special Branch rappel in to interrogate the cast. What is this exactly? Soldiers? Indiana Jones? Two Indiana Joneses? Apes? And now Alice in Wonderland wandering into an active war zone. Legemon. The Indiana Jones dancers, just as you remember him. I worry this is getting a bit too erotically charged. Ah, no, we're good. Is this the first time we've seen the ostrich loose? It's really disconcerting. Like when Cuddles the Chimp would walk about. Humpa! <laughs> Humpa! Pick up your jumper! Who said that? They make way for wacky Timmy Mallet. I thought that was Freddy at Live Aid for a second. In lieu of an act, Timmy brings classic panto, claiming he's lost his mallet. What are you talking about? Here? Oh, no, it isn't. Nope, I didn't see no mallet, mallet there. I'm just... <laughs> Kill Nubby! What happened? Is there anybody here who would like a bash on the head? I'll take one. Not with that foam thing, though. You got any bricks? Okay, I rub your tummy at the same time. Now, you look utterly, utterly bonkers. I tell you what, Mallets, mate, what do you say we go for a world wacky record of bashing a squillion people on the head in 30 seconds? Do you think I can do it? This was around the time they banned nunchucks on the Ninja Turtles, but clearly nobody was bothered about frenzied copycat hammer attacks. The prevailing energy of 1990s show is, despite a big audience and royal attendance, Ah, oh, just everybody fucking wing it. What's the plan, Timmy? Nothing, you say? Never mind, out you go. That's why we get stuff like this. Wurzel Gummidge was one of those things as a kid which I liked but which also terrified me. This is exactly what my nightmares were like. Where are you? Where are you? Hiding under the covers, Wurzel mate. Thankfully, he's not looking for the five-year-old me to put straw where my guts used to be, but for his girlfriend, Aunt Sally. I'll tell you what, I'll see you in a minute because I've got to go and find them. Very nice to see you all. See you on the telly, Welly. Well, Aunt Sally, I'm coming, Aunt Sally. You're, you're loving words over here, Aunt Sally. Similarly, Jim Davidson, unable to do his usual routines about Chalky and how horrible fannies are, is reduced to slapstick. For anyone who sat through my video on his mucky pantos, too hot for YouTube, links in the description, this section's pretty jarring. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well now it's over to Baron Hardak's kitchen for a slapstick cookery lesson with Jim Davison and Charlie Drake. Have you seen Buttons yet, boys and girls? I think he's backstage filming a vlog moaning about Lenny Henry. Not because he's black, though. This is basically a family-friendly practice run for Jim and Charlie stumbling through gags about fingering and big spunking wangers. He wasn't called Baron Hard up there, I can tell you. Shall I give it to him, boys and girls? What I used to stir the mixture. Use your head, boy. This whole sketch is a window into a universe where Jim was born a chuckle brother. Shall I? No. If this was boobs in the wood, all those pies would be made of cum. of the Italia Conti Academy of Theatre Arts invite us all to shake a tail feather. Did they get a job lot of Indiana Jones costumes that year? Let's the ventriloquist with the brilliant name. Dawson Chance. 4.3 million men in the UK experience erectile problems. Viagra Connect is now available without prescription. If that doesn't work, as a last resort. I tell you what, on the count of three, would you all shout out, Wake up, Willie? Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Nothing. Of course, there are musical performances with Bross, Jason Donovan, and... And now, from America, the sensational new hitmaker, Paula Abdul. Imagine you're a kid in 1990, and Paula Abdul comes on for Opposites Attract, but it's just two blokes miming and no MC scat cap. I could have at least stuck some ears on Mallet. Incidentally, who would have thought that we could be lovers? You fucking a cat, Paula. As well as famous people, the audience enjoy international circus type acts. A mime artist. <laughs> A Czechoslovakian hula hooper. A violinist. Fathers for Justice. Don't you dare give me a royal variety without someone pretending to be other people. There's no mucking about here. None of that lovely dinner party I'm at. And who's that over there? My name's Maddie Cryer, and this is Julie Andrews. Girls in white dresses. This is my bosom pal, Dolly Parton. From Carolation Street, Hilda Abdel, the late great Karen Carpenter. In the words of Ben Miller. The Royal Engineers Gymnastic Display Team. 
remember in school being really fat and shit at PE and when football lads were all doing somersaults over the pommel horse the teacher would have to let you get away with one of these. Don't know if I'd fancy this lot in a Black Hawk Down situation. Sir Captain Tom probably gave them a right beasting backstage. For those more cultured viewers who can't abide the gutter antics of your Bernie Cliftons, thank God for Spike off Heidi High. Dancing the celebrated pas de deux from Don Quixote, may I present the stars of the Bolshoi. <laughs> and some Russian dancing. Though for this year's bit off a West End musical, it's the devil we should be thanking. The box. You opened it. We came. The one thing which most makes me feel like I'm in a coma, pumped full of hallucination inducing meds, drawing on images from my damaged psyche, is Bonnie Langford coming out with a load of dancing Draculas. If Blobby shows up, I'm definitely in a hospital bed somewhere. Reality comes crashing back down with the comedy stylings of James Cricket. I got a letter from my mammy this morning. Oh, oh. Oh. And there was little crooked Patty from the turtle lucky bot. There was little Vicky Milligan who does the And there was Rosen and Brandon after the And the beautiful Miss Brady and the private horse and guy. Is Jimmy not knowing the words part of the bit? I went the truth, don't the blue. Careful, Gaza got in trouble for that. I believe the gay and the the blue rock hey. There's another appearance from Ron Lucas. The most mouth movie of all the vent acts. Okay, how's this? Very good. Why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know why. She wanted to lay it on the line. <laughs> My jaw don't move that much when I'm eating gravel. And the comedy continues in the capable hands, and it seems arms and legs are little and large. Ah, fuck. Coma it is then. This is a redo of a sketch from their 1980 Christmas special and physically taxing for a pair of comics approaching their 50s. In the original, poor Eddie almost died from exertion and now they're doing it live. Zebedee, he was brimming with glee and bounced all over Golly. Florence, she said, I'm ready for bed and we all fell down. Eddie gasses early putting every new verse on a cliffhanger of will he be able to get back up. And we all fell down Who hit the wheels, went head over heels and laughed He cocked his hooter Noddy said hell, I'm knocking me bell And we all fell down Hope there's a doctor in the audience. One of the toys made a very rude noise And we all fell down He made it. Adrian Boswell off bread is back. His name was Hans Christian Andersen. His father was a humble shoemaker, but he'll long be remembered for such wonderful tales as The Little Match Girl, The Ugly Duckling, and of course, the story we present for you now. A hundred years from now, some cyborg actor off the bread remake will be talking about me like this. History's greatest storyteller, 
He'll long be remembered for the tales about Charles Manson, a vampire Jimmy Savile, and tweets about well bad knobache. This performance of the King's new clothes fills the theatre with unbearable tension, everyone on the edge of their seats, of a single mind. Are we going to see Christopher Biggin's penis? Your Majesty, to a wise man, this is a very beautiful suit of clothes. But to a fool, it is absolutely invisible. Isn't it? Right. Isn't it? Fine. Look at the cat the stars alive. The suit of clothes is all together, it's all together, but all together, the most remarkable suit of clothes that I have ever seen. It's happening, it's happening. Biggin's bell end and balls. A lovely shade of green. Cowards. But I guess you can't be too mad when they bring out the Queen. Isn't it ah, isn't it rich? Look at the charm of everything! What if the King came by? The little boy looked horrified. The King the old chicken, it's all chicken, it's all chicken! No Hashtag release the biggins dick cut. Paul Daniels. Christ, does he live under the stage? Even those who love magic will sink into despair at the sight of the string and stick, the most children's birthday trick of all, though he does try to enliven it with a rap. Over here I have two strings and both of them do silly things. It runs down one stick and through the end. It's like Terry Woven, round the bend. And take a bath. Thankfully, it's just a warm-up. Now this is a curtain, see? And this is a girl. There's a nice little Easter egg here for the Daniels diehards. Oster the Gazoozalum. Good word, good word. I like that one. Oster the That was the magic word. Oster the My oh my. Get back, you mutinous peasants. Shut up. And yet, shut up. Is everybody happy? In this period, there was only one thing the noble viewer wanted to hear. One clarion call signalling absolute tip-top entertainment. Norbit! Norbit, where are you? Uh, uh, hello. I've lost my dog, Snorbit. I don't know where she is, and what I thought was, if you all count up to three, well I will, and if you shout out Snorbit as loud as you can, maybe she'll hear us and she'll come and find me. Would you do that for me, please? Before Facebook, this was your only recourse with a lost dog. Form a double act with your brother, Mike Winters. Break up due to tensions arising from your affair with a much younger dancer. Forge ahead with a solo career, then get on the bill at the Royal Variety and ask the audience to shout its name. So here we go. One, two, three. Where where is he? Oh, oh, thank you. Hello. Oh, where have you been? Oh, I'm so worried. If you ever lose your job and get depressed, just think of Bernie Winters, abandoned by his creative other half and having to rebrand the entire act as I've got a big dog. Do you like her? <laughs> the first impersonation, that of an Alsatian. <laughs> and now a poodle. Oh, she's done that already. Are you ready? When you're smiling, when you're smiling, you're going to look. Bernie's big closer is making her speak, but he needs our help, boys and girls. Bum, 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 Snorbits, and you all shout out Snorbits as loud as you possibly can. I will say speak, she will then bark, and then you'll give her a nice round of applause. Now, would you like to see that? This went out on telly. Well, here we go then. Are we ready, Governor? Right, and bum, 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 bum. Speak! <laughs> what more? What more? What more does a man need? Brilliant. Our main event this year is titled like a ride at the fun fair. Megastar's musical mania. Alvin Stardust. 
megastars musical mania you're 48 you've been doing that homework longer than a week open up a honey it's a love a boy me that's a knocking everybody hopping everybody bopping bopping in the high school but we've barely even started on what turns out to be an exhausting medley. And here's Kiki D. And some rock and roll champions. Whatever that means. Now it's the time of the record breaking Cheryl Baker. I don't want to jinx it, but. Can you believe there hasn't been any grease yet? And the audience scream their appreciation for Shaking Stevens. Let's turn up the volume with pop producer Pete Waterman. Good evening, up the hit man. This is her, Michaela Strachan. I didn't remember at all Michaela Strachan's short musical career. Is this a Mandela effect? But the moment Pete turns up, as well as really exposing how all his songs were the same, it's like being waterboarded with the late 80s. Fucking choking on synth. I swear! <coughs> Been laughing, weren't me, mate? Let's hear it for you! Let's hear it for Sunita! The best part of all this is Pete Waterman doing his dad dancing in the back the whole way through. Let's hear it for Big Bang! Let's hear it for Sonia! And please welcome back Jason Donovan! We know he's got form from the last one, but the level of disrespect for the audience is truly something to behold prop guitar on his back, not even bothering to hold a mic that isn't plugged in. He might as well have tape over his mouth. We've all had a ruddy good laugh, but now it's down to business starting with the curtain call, a glorious I spy of entertainment past. Despite the packed roster, nobody was trusted to do the serious bit as Chris Tarrant's been drafted in. What, Jim Davidson not good enough to introduce a princess? Timmy Mallet? A squillion squillion thanks your mad majesty! Blah! And as Maggie gets her cheque, another once anarchic TV personality bends the knee. Her Royal Highness the Princess Margaret, hip it! You nick that wave off your sister. Fair dues, she probably owes you, after taking one for the team and sitting through this. As always, the very end is the best bit, with incredible background music. Suspecting he'd just muck about and take a swing, Mallet's wisely kept out of reach. Come on, get to Sid and Eddie. I want to see the lads finally get the respect they deserve. (laughs) 
get to Sid and Eddie, get to Sid and Eddie. Yes! Hang on. No handshake? Abolish the monarchy. Bloody parasites. I can't understand why you wouldn't want to shake Eddie Large's sweaty paw. I can do it, Timmy. Bye bye.